Um, welcome everybody to Digital Literacy Workshop and this is Getting Feedback with Google Forms and this is going to be a real quick and dirty on getting started with Google Forms and some ideas and I'm going to share a lot of resources and um, we're going to try to keep it to 20 minutes which means we won't get to do everything but um, hopefully this will give you some ideas to get started. And I've got some great resources that have lots and lots of ideas that I'll share with you. So um, I sent everybody an um, email with uh, collaborative notes. And in that collaborative notes, that's where all the resources are. Um, I'm going to jump over here and show you that right quick. So it looks like this. Um, on that, you have access to the slides that I'm going to be showing. And um, then you have a link to the webinar, the um, archive, where the webinar will be um, it's being recorded right now, and it will be on on that page um, once it gets finished recording. And then there's also a reflection form, and uh, this is a form um, that you need to complete for clock hours. So if you if you attend six at least six of these sessions and you complete a clock hour for each form, I mean, uh, sorry, if you <laughs> complete a reflection form for each session, then you're eligible for three clock hours. If you attend eight sessions, you would be eligible for four hours, etc. So that's that. Back to my. Oh, back to here. Come on. There we go. All right. So moving on. And so we're back in GoToMeeting this week. Last week we tried out Google Hangouts on air, and there were some people who had trouble getting on. And it was new enough to me that I didn't really know how to help them. So I'm going to figure out how to help you guys before I jump back onto that again. Um, so we're using GoToMeeting. And right now I, have every, I don't have anybody muted. It's working fine. So if anybody wants to say something, they can. But if it starts getting um, um, a bit noisy and, and hard to hear, I'll mute everybody. And then if you have something to say, you can put it in the chat window. And I'll try to remember to take a look at the chat window every once in a while. But right now, I don't have anybody muted, and it's working fine. So can everybody hear me? Yes. No. OK, perfect. I already talked about clock hours and the reflection forms. And pretty much already talked about the learning targets. We're going to look at how to set up a Google Form and some different options in Google Forms and some ideas for how to use them. Way more than we can cover in 20 minutes, so hopefully you'll just get an idea and get started. I wanted to do a quick ad for our summer digital literacy workshops that are going to be happening in August. And um, the first one listed here, um, Google Apps for Assessment, it's going to have a lot to do with Google Forms and setting up different ways. Not just Google Forms, but a lot of it will be Google Forms. So. Um, if you if you get a little taste here and you want to learn more, that would be a good one to sign up for. Um, we also have one on Google Sites, which is like the website kind of page and lots of different things you can do with that, setting up portfolios and things like that. Um, then just kind of a general uh, one on all of the different apps with Google Apps for Education. And then um, this one's kind of specific, but we are going to be um, talking about language. Um, one of my focuses next year is going to be um, instruction with language acquisition ideas and so we're going to look at the idea of content area big books and actually create them and this sounds like a primary thing but it's actually something that can be used at any grade level and then the last thing is we've got some people coming from the library of congress for a primary source documents uh, workshop that's going to be all day long so that's that little plug right there moving on okay so um, I borrowed this, a couple of slides from a, fr a friend of mine who's also a trainer. And I, she did a nice job of just showing what's on a Google Form. And I'm also going to pull up a Google Form so we can take a look as we go. OK, so to start with, when you're starting a Google Form, um, you would go into your Google Drive and you go to Create. And, and then one of the things that you can create is a form. And then um, the first thing you're going to see is a theme page. So I'm just going to call this one um, 
actually I'm going to call it uh, evidence, documenting evidence. So, and you can choose the different, there's different um, things, um, and the, there's not a whole lot of different things, but there's a few. So, you can take a look and see if there's one you'd like to use. I'm just going to be simple and use the default thing for this. And then you end up just with this really easy form to fill out, and there's all kinds of things you can do. I'm going to move over here for just a second and come back to that. Oops. Here. So what you're going to see is um, this anatomy of the Google form. You um, can add questions, headers, breaks, pictures, videos, themes, and we'll look at that in a minute. And um, then you have different types of questions. So let's go back over here. And so I'm going to do just a really quick thing to show you one way this could work. This is just a – so here's um, – Go ahead. Say that again. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend this I, that I'm a teacher. I'm not pretending. I really am a teacher, but I'm gonna pretend that I am creating a um, a form that I'm going to use to collect evidence of learning in my classroom. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna start off here, and I need my students' names on here. So that's gonna be my first choice. Now, if I'm an elementary teacher, I probably have between 15 and 30 students. So you might want to do, do this this way. If you have more students, you would probably want to do this a different way. But hey, I'm Martha? just gonna, yes. If you check the box that says automatically collect respondents uh, Mount Vernon yes. District username, it'll give you their username and their full name as well. Right, right. Um, so if you take a look up here, thank you, Greg. Um, if you take a look up here and I I hadn't gotten to that point yet, but I, I probably would have forgotten, so thank you, Greg. Um, you have some options here, and what the first one is, um, because we're in the Google Apps for Education, we can actually have it set so that um, it kind of takes, takes the guesswork out of it, and if somebody logs into this, that it actually collects their, um, log, it, their name, their, log, their email address, and that kind of thing. For this particular thing, I'm not going to put that one on there because I'm going to be using this as a teacher. So I'm going to turn that off. And I'm just going to, so I'm not asking other people to use this form, I'm just creating it for myself. So I'm just going to put some uh, popular names here. Let's see. And, I, and I'll show you in a second how easily you can put um, names um, or anything in this in this list of information. So instead of multiple choice, I'm going to choose choose from a list because it makes a nice drop down list. So I'm going to hit required question. Not that it really matters because again, I'm making the form for myself. And then here's um, what I'm going to do. And of course, I don't have that up anymore because it all went the way of the dodo. Okay, so I have. I'm going to bring this over here. I actually have the elementary uh, reporting standards from the report card here, and I'm just going to click on fourth grade, and I'm going to click on uh, math here. I'm just going to highlight the math standards that we have and copy them. And now I'm going to go back to my form. And what I want to do is I want to have a drop-down menu with all of the, stand, the reporting standards for math. So I'm just going to say standards here, or I could say math standards or whatever, and I want to choose from a list, and then I'm just going to copy those in there. Ta-da! As simple as that. I didn't have to type them all out, so I could have done that with names if I had a list of names too. Okay, and then I could keep going. But now I've got some issues. With my, there we go. Keep going here, and I'm going to come down here and add one more item. And this one is going to be um, evidence of learning. So this is where I could type in what I was seeing the student do. And that could be text. It could be paragraph text. You see all the different choices that you have here. And 
Then if I wanted to actually score them on this, I could actually do um, a meeting standard or something like that. I don't know. And then I could put in the, the um, again, with my drop-down boxes that I like, I could do one, two, three, four. Okay, I got kind of ahead of myself here. Okay, so now I have this nice little form that I've created, and I'm going to hit send form, or actually I'm going to hit view response, oh, no, I'm going to hit view live form because we want to see what it looks like. So now I'm a teacher and I have this on my iPad or I have this on my phone and I'm walking around the classroom and I'm looking for um, a specific thing that students are working on. So I pick, I'm over at Noah's desk and we're working on adding and subtracting within one million and this is what I see Noah doing, um, whatever he's doing and then this is how well I see him do it. He's actually doing a good job. He's meeting standard, or maybe he's just not quite there. Okay? I just created a really simple form, and I'm using it for observations in my classroom. Okay? That's just one way you can create a do a form. Any questions? Nope. Okay. So if I hit submit, what happens is it, it sends me to a spreadsheet, and it's taking a second to jump in there and give it to me. And then in this spreadsheet, which is in my um, Google Drive, I would have the time that I was doing the observation, the student's name, what standard I was looking at, whatever evidence I had, and how they were doing. So very simple. That's just the really, you know, cut and dry of how a form works. So we're going to go back here and keep going because we got a lot to cover. So this is just showing you that you take the form, you create the form, and then your answers, as it says here, automatically end up in a spreadsheet. And another nice thing that you can do um, with the Google Forms is if you if you go to um, Show Summary of, of Responses under Form, you get a nice graph that gives you the information based on whatever your um, whatever data you're collecting. And sometimes it works better than others. It matters what kind of data you're collecting. So um, in this case, they had some specific things, so it looks really nice there. And you can also set notifications. So like, for instance, right now, um, I have these forms for registration, and um, one of you registered this afternoon, which is great, but I had already sent out the um, information to everybody. But because I had set email me when a user submits a form, I knew that there were other people who had joined in, so I was able to email them as well. So this is good if you've got um, people making comments or whatever, they can, you can set the notification rules. It's a good thing to know. I'm jumping really fast here because uh, because I, I've got a lot of things I want to show you past these slides that somebody else created. But um, so this is this is what Greg was talking about, where um, we have some we have some choices, and one of them is that um, people would have to actually sign in to their Google account to answer the form. I tend not to do that, but what Greg said is is a good thing. Um, if they do sign in then it automatically captures their email address so you know who's done it and who hasn't. So when you're working with kids, it's really helpful. I find when I'm working with teachers, it actually um, hinders the process because teachers sometimes aren't as quick to pick up on things as kids are. <laughs> <laughs> so I try to make it as, as, as barrier-free as possible for teachers. <laughs> okay, and another great thing, and I'm going to show you some really nice um, um, template. What, once you get started and, you, and I show you these resources, you're going to go, oh, there's so, so many cool ideas. Um, you can actually go to the template gallery in Google Docs if you just search for template gallery, uh, Google Docs template gallery, and there's other ways to get there, but that's 
the easiest way for me to tell you right now. And people have already created surveys. So you can click the Use This Template, and it will give you in your Google Docs um, a survey that somebody's already done or some kind of form that they've done. And then you can edit it to meet your needs. So it's a good place to start and get ideas of what kind of things you might want to do with the form. And we're going to look at Flubberoo here in just a second. Um, this is a, a really fun thing to do. I know Greg's done it before. I don't know anybody else. Um, Gracie asked a good question here. I'm sorry, I'm jumping back and forth, but I try to remember to look at the thing. Can a photo be placed into the form as evidence? Um, the photo itself cannot be placed in the form as evidence. You can use a photo in a form, and I'm going to show you an example of actually a video, but a photo would work too. So what you would have to do is, um, if you had a photo that you wanted to do, it would need to be attached to a URL, so there was some place for them to go to get that photo. So like if it was in your um, Picasso slideshow, you could attach the URL to it, and then that would be how you would jump to the evidence. I That would be great if you could just pop um, photos into the evidence, especially since that's the example I gave and photos are a great piece of evidence. But um, that's how I would do that. I would, you know, if your photo was digital, it could be in your Google Drive. And if it was in your Google Drive, it would have a URL attached to it. So you could just put that URL in there. It'd be nicer just to take a quick snapshot though, I know. Okay, back to this. Flubberoo is a way to do, um, create self-grading quizzes. Um, in Google Forms. So it's a nice way to do like exit tickets and all kinds of things like that. So we're going to take a look at Flubberoo in a minute. But before we do, I want to show you this. So this guy, um, he has done, Tom Barrett has done these however many interesting ways to do all kinds of different things. And he has one, um, and what he does is he does a collaborative um, presentation using Google Slides and then people can jump in and add their own slide to here. So right now, this says 86. I don't know if it's still 86 or not. Um, if you take a look at this, you will see just a lot of really great ideas for using Google Forms. So I wanted to point that out because there's no way I can go through them all right now. And uh, this is a great way to get some, some hints on how to use that. Okay. Um, another person, and this, these are in your notes as well, Kern Kelly um, has done a great job of sharing some different forms that he's created. I'll just pop on there real fast. And so he's got a form, like if I click on here, this puts this in my Google Docs, a self-grading quiz. And then I can um, edit it to make it work for me. There's all kinds of things in here. There's uh, forms for administrators like uh, form observation walkthroughs and things like that. There's a thing where if you put in a URL in the form, it will create a QR code to go with that URL. Um, book list, all kinds of things like that. So it's worth taking a peek at that. Okay, now I want to show you a few. So I kind of walked through very quickly the evidence um, a collection, and I just wanted to say that um, one other thing with that one, just, that's just an idea of a teacher form you want to create for yourself to keep up with information. So if you've got your iPhone or your tablet or your whatever, smartphone, and you, and you have um, created a form like that, what you would do is you would bookmark that link, however you bookmark your links on your device, and then you could just hit that, open it up, and put in the information you want. Um, I know at LaVenture they're using it for their um, refer, like their discipline referrals. So the teacher, so there's a, a, a link to a form on their desktop and teachers when they need to send some kid to the office, they click on the link. There's a quick form for them to fill out. Um, their vice principal gets an email notification that this student is coming and what they did. And um, Greg Dowd was telling me that before they get to the office, Mr. Donahue already knows that they're coming and why they're coming. So uh, some really cool ways you can use forms this, that way. This is an example from um, Catherine Uslan, who is a, a French teacher at the high school. 
Um, and it's an example of how you could use Google Forms to actually put a whole lesson in the form. Um, this is in French, but we can handle that. So what she's done is um, she's just asked some questions and she's actually embedded videos in. So they have to watch the video and then answer the question. Um, this, this is a really nice format for um, the direction we're going with the Smarter Balance Assessment. Obviously, we don't want to you know, just teach to the test, but one of the things the Smarter Balance Assessment is asking us to do, and Common Core Standards in general, is to, um, to compare text to media. So you could actually have a video and some text on your Google form, and then students could respond to that. And it doesn't have to be um, multiple choice or checkbox questions. It can actually be paragraphs that they could write in on. Questions on that? I know I'm going really fast, especially since we got a late start. <clears throat> Okay, now for just a tad bit of fun, um, in your in your collaborative notes that you got, you should have a form that looks like this, Flubberoo demo. So if you could go to that form and fill that out real quickly. And once, you're, once you've filled it out, if you'll say done or something in chat, so I know that I'm not just sitting here waiting for people. <laughs> Can you help me find where these notes are yes. that I'm going to? <laughs> okay, let's see. I will actually put a link to the notes in the chat window, so give me a second to get that. Okay, so I'm going to put that right. You see the chat window? I don't, actually. Uh -oh. Hmm. oh, maybe. I don't see a chat window either. Okay, so. Um, oh, right maybe. I found it. You found it? Can you tell us, Sharon, how to find it? <laughs> On the right-hand side, there's five icons, and one, the bottom one, I think, was the chat window. Okay, perfect. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And then, oh, and then the link is there. Okay. And so down here at the bottom it says on the um, on here it says Flubberoo demo, and that's just mm -hmm. uh, oops. Now I've really okay. 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 I know these are really hard questions for a Monday afternoon, but. Too hard. <laughs> Done. Okay. Now, if I can find my thing that I lost here. Hi, this is Gracie. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Gracie. Oh, hey. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm done, but now I'm just seeing my screen of what you're doing. I don't see the chat window where I can anything back to oh is that the little message right there um yep got it okay good yep. <laughs> okay so now I I'm just gonna I'm gonna show you what it looks like so you guys fill this out and this is what I have now a bunch, <laughs> a bunch of answers right here now what I can do is I can go to tools and I can go to and there's directions for this I'll share with you I can go to Script Gallery, and I'm going to look up Flubberoo, which is a silly name, but there it is. And I just hit Install, and I had this all set up before, and then everything crashed, so um, I wouldn't have to do this last minute like I'm doing right now. So, and then, and then it just asks if I, yeah, I just hit Accept there. Just trust me, it's okay. <laughs> okay, so then what happens is I have Flubberoo up here now. See that? And if I hit um, grade assignment, 
the first thing it's going to ask me to do, and I forgot one thing. <laughs> the first thing it's going to ask me to do is it's going to um, check to see. So this identifies the student, and this is um, identifies the student, and then this is for point. So that's correct. What I should have done is taken the test myself, so I had a key. But I'll just use one of yours for a key. So then I hit continue. And then I pick somebody that's going to be my um, my person that's my key. <laughs> and then it just takes all of that information and automatically grades it. Ta-da! And of course, we're all just doing this, so we love you, Gracie, and I'm sure that's just fine. <laughs> But anyway, so it's right there. So it tells you the answers, and it just graded it for you. So you can see how easy that would be to do with your students. Now the next thing that I can do is if I go back up to Flubberoo, because I asked for your email in, in the form. So if I click Email Grades, it actually would email each student their grades. And if I wanted to, I could include the answer key so the student would know what they missed. And thanks for playing. <laughs> and then everybody gets their email with their thing. Now, what Greg was saying about if the kids logged in with the form, um, then it would automatically put their email in so you wouldn't have to ask for it. That's Flubberoo very quickly. It's just one of many scripts. Here's another really cool thing. Because that's What's fun on a Monday afternoon is to do something cool. So there's another. Yes, ma'am. I was just wondering whether I just looked at my email. It says my grade points were two out of two. Can we also score them four, three, two, one? I don't believe you can, but that's a really good point. I'll have to look into that for that. I'm not sure. There's another. There's another um, program for grading that's a rubric. It's called Gubric. So that's for that assessment thing. If you come to the assessment day of the Summer training, we'll talk about that rubric too. So that would probably be the best to use for a 4-3-2-1 thing like that. Okay, thanks. Okay, so now if you'll click on the, um, we're going back to our little um, collaborative notes, and if you click on vacation spot. So here, if you can just really quickly, don't take too much time. Everybody's thinking about vacation right now anyway. So just add your favorite vacation spot. And make sure that you have um, a city and a state, and you don't have to do a country, but like if it's, you could do, I'll just give you an example, you could do Bali, Indonesia, but if you did um, a Suato River or something like that, it might not come up. So anyway, just, just put in a location, your name, a location, and, and just like one sentence is why that's your favorite spot. You didn't know you were going to be tested today. <laughs> I can't get my chat window now again. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's gone. Find my links. I'll do it another way. Okay, I'll give you just a few more seconds. Don't want to give you too much pressure.
Okay, so once you've finished, you'll see that everybody's responses are popping into here. And I actually put in a few test ones this morning that are just don't really mean anything. But anyway, so these are the ones you guys have added in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take this information from this form. And now it's on a spreadsheet. And I'm going to move over to a Google Map. I like Google Maps, so I have to throw that in here somewhere. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on um, My Custom Maps. And I'm going to create a new map. I'll make sure you have steps to do this because I'm doing it too fast. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the, that spreadsheet into my map. So I'm going to click on Import. And I'm going to go to my Google Drive. And here's Favorite Vacation Spots. Okay. And then what we want is um, we would like our landmarks to be positioned by where the vacation spot is. It's thinking. Hopefully it's not going to crash on me. Because this is really cool. Come on. I think it can't figure out where my couch is. That, that could be. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, you crashed it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to go back to our map. So that would be a good thing to remember if somebody is so smart and puts my couch. We're going to change that to, is it, is it Blaine or Ferndale? Yeah. Which one? Uh, B-L-A-I-N-E. Okay, it is Blaine. I said, I said, is it Blaine or Ferndale? And you said yes. <laughs> okay, I'm giving you a hard time. All right. Now let's try it one more time. If I can get back to my map here. Hopefully it'll work. Come on. If it doesn't, you need to try this on your own because it really does work and it's very cool. And I can show you another map. Maybe if I start over. Okay, let's start over. <clears throat> Was it supposed to be only U.S. spots? No, it can be any. It worked for me earlier, so. Okay, I'm going to cancel it. I'm just going to show you the other one that I created here real quick. So here's the one I did this morning with the things I had this morning. And if I take a look, like here is, I can make this smaller. So if I click here, um, it will tell me that um, vacation spot, you see up here in the corner, Vacation spot is Ecuador and why I like it. And if I click here, there's Santa Fe. Gives me the information. So that's what should have happened. It's exciting. <laughs> I don't know why that didn't happen. Oh, it looks like someone. No, that's just going back to Ecuador. So a little bit of a fail, but that's okay. Give it a try. It's really worth playing with. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention with both Flubberoo and with the map thing, there's a new thing in Google Spreadsheet. Let's see if I can pull up a, a spreadsheet here real quick. So if you go to Spreadsheets, I'm going to create a spreadsheet. And you'll notice at the top, there's something called add-ons. And um, one of the add-ons is Flubberoo. There, there's a map one. So if I go to Get Add-ons, it gives me some different ones that I can try. And then they should show up in your Google Sheets and you can use them. There's a schedule generator. But I was having trouble making that work today. Um, I think I didn't know the order to do things. So um, I just went the old-fashioned route and just went 
to tools, and then script gallery. But they're, they are actually listed under add-ons as well. That's a little extra information. <laughs> okay. We are out of time, so I'm going to stop for now, but I do want to really encourage you to look at the um, links that I shared because they are full of really, really great ideas of all kinds of ways that you could use um, Google uh, Forms for collecting data, getting information from parents, quizzes, exit slips, um, um, scheduling rooms. There's just a million things that you could do. So uh, make sure to take a look at all of that. And remember to uh, reflect, uh, do the reflection sheet so that you can get credit for this. And next week, we're going to be looking at um, virtual field trips. So we'll spend 20 to 30 minutes looking at a bunch of really great sites for taking your kids to other places without having to leave the classroom. And this, again, is great for K through 12. I'll give examples of all of those. And I have a question here. Uh, this is our statement. This is. Uh, from Tracy, I think. No, it's from Gracie, not Tracy. Um, great for the fifth grade science mapping of landforms kit. And that would be perfect. So just think of that for anything. I had a, um, before they actually had that cool tool right in the maps to do that, um, I had a friend who went on Twitter with a form, shared a form on Twitter, and asked what you ate for, uh, what people ate for breakfast. And he had teachers from all over the world that followed him on Twitter. And so they all, what they were eating for breakfast that morning and then he took that information and put it on a Google map so the kids could it was going with what's for breakfast Mr. President or something a book they were reading mm -hmm. and so they had all that information that they were able to collect really easily and um, using Google Forms to collect science data is a really um, great way to do that because the kids can all collect their own information like if they're doing all doing the same experiment they can put their mm -hmm results in there and then you can compare them all together. There's lots of great things you can do with that. Hmm. I think I'm through, but do you, does anybody have questions or comments or ideas that they want to share? Nope. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad that you came and I'm sorry for the glitches as we were getting going here today. And have a wonderful mm -hmm. rest of the day. It's beautiful outside. Thanks. You too. You too. Thanks, Martha. Thanks. Thank you.